how to get or set the import path of an asset with C++ in Unreal. The import path is the path of the file that was used to import the asset in Unreal. So for example, if you imported a static mesh, maybe you used an FBX file and that's the path of the FBX file on your drive. So sometimes it can be interesting to retrieve that path to know where the asset comes from and also to be able to modify that path to be able to, let's say, re-import the asset using a different FBX file. So let's get to it. So in the other file, today we're gonna have a few functions. Actually, we're gonna have two basic functions to get and set the asset import path. That's super simple, but we're also gonna need an helper function because most of the time the normal way to get or set the asset import path works, but in some cases it doesn't and I'm going to give you a bit more information about it a little bit later, but in short sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, so I added a manual way to set or get the asset import path and combining both those techniques together it should support most cases. So that's why today we're gonna have three functions and for the third function we are gonna need the asset import data, so that's why I have it right here. So asset import data that we're gonna need for the helper function and then we have the main function. So here I'm gonna scroll down a little bit so we can see better, but we have the get asset import path. That one's super simple, super straightforward. We just feed it the asset path of the asset we want to retrieve the import path from, and as output, it's going to give you, well, the import path of that asset. Perfect, super simple. Same thing for the set asset import path. That's super simple too. You have to feed it the asset path, once again, the path, the asset you want to modify, and also the new path, the new import path you want to use for that asset. Super simple, that function is going to set the asset import path. Super straightforward. And finally, we have the third function right here at the bottom, the get asset import data. For that one, I also tried to keep it simple. You just have to feed it the asset directly. I'm not feeding it the asset path because we're going to load the asset in both those functions already. So I'm going to use the preloaded asset. So that's why right here I'm feeding it the object and not the asset path. So we have the asset, the asset object, and as output is going to give you the asset import data. In there, you're gonna have all the information that was used to import the asset the first time and part of those information, well, you have the import path. So we're going to use that class directly to modify or get the asset import path. Perfect. So that's it for the header file. Now it's time to jump in the CVP. And here, as usual, we're going to start with the include. So the first include is going to be the editor reimport handler. That's a little bit weird, but that's the way we are going to get and set the asset import path. We're not going to reimport anything, but that class is going to help us get and set the import path because, well, that class also needs the import path to be able to reimport the asset. So, well, we're going to take advantage of that. So the editor reimport handler to be able to modify the asset import path super easily, but for the manual way, we're also going to need the asset import data. So that's why I'm including it right here, editor framework, asset import data. But actually that's not enough because to be able to retrieve the asset import data from the asset, we also need to include all the different asset types we want to support today. So in my case, I want to support all of those. Do I want to support the static mesh? Yes. Skeletal mesh? Yes. Texture, anim sequence, data table, sound wave. So these are the six asset types we're going to support today. But if you want to support more asset type, you're going to need to include them also because there's no easy way to retrieve the asset import data from the asset. You really have to get it from the asset directly. You have to cast to the asset type and then you have to retrieve it from there. So it's a little bit annoying, but that's the way it works. So if you want to use the manual way, you're going to need to include manually all the different asset types you need. If you're just happy with the simpler way, you can simply include the reimport and learn and ignore everything else. But I strongly recommend to use both together because there's a few edge cases that I'm going to show you at the end that are a little bit annoying. But anyway, so that's it for the includes. Uh, we have one include that is inside the Unreal ED module, which is not a default module. So we have to make sure that it is already included in the build.cs file. And if I look through all my module, I have it right here because I used it in a previous video. So Unreal ED module right here. Perfect. Now we can jump back in the CPP and start with the first function, the get asset import path. So I'm going to scroll right here. The first step is going to be to load the asset because as input right here, we have only the asset path. We don't have the asset object yet. So let's just load it right here. Static load object, load the asset asset path and that's going to give you the asset object and then I'm just going to make sure that this asset is valid because if the asset is not valid I'm not going to be able to retrieve the import path because well I don't have an asset so here I'm going to check if it's null if it's null I'm going to return right away telling that I'm not able to retrieve the asset import path because well the asset is not valid so good now we have a valid asset and then we're gonna try to retrieve the asset import path from that asset and the way we're gonna do that is by simply asking the re-import manager if he's able to re-import the asset that's a little bit weird there's no other the way really to retrieve the import path from that asset using the asset reimport manager. So to retrieve the path, we have to call the can reimport function. That's just how it is. So asking the reimport manager if he's able to reimport the asset. The asset is the asset that we have right here. If he is able to reimport the asset, he's also going to return us the path that are going to be used to reimport that asset. That's weird, but that's how it works. So here, that's why I created my variable paths variable right here that I'm going to feed to the can reimport function, and that function is going to populate that variable for us. So 
So asking the reimport managers if he's able to reimport the asset. If it is, it's going to populate the paths variable and that's good. Then we're going to know if the reimport manager is able to process that asset, but that's not enough. I actually want to make sure that there's at least one element inside that variable because if there's no path inside the asset, well, we cannot return the import path because there's no path there. So I'm just going to make sure that there's at least one element in the import paths that we will be able to return it at the end of the function. And that's what we're going to do right here. And the path that we're going to return is the path that we have right here. That's the first element of our list. That's the first path that was used to import the asset. So we have the path right here and then we can simply return it because, well, we found the path that we want to return. So I have my path right here. I'm going to add a little bit more information to say that I was able to retrieve the asset import path successfully and it was done using the reimport manager. And that just to help me show you how to break the reimport manager and why I'm using a manual way also, not only the reimport manager. So here I'm identifying that I was able to retrieve the path using the reimport manager that we will know if we found the path using the manual way or the reimport manager. But in any case, right now we found the path so we can simply return it and that's it. The function's over. We found the path using the reimport manager. But if the reimport manager is not able to process the path, we're going to go the manual way. And that's the health right here. So to do that, I'm simply going to retrieve the import data using our little import function we're going to do a little bit later. So the get asset import data using the asset. So I'm filling in the asset and as output is going to give you the asset import data. And inside that asset import data, you should be able to get the path from there. So if the import data is valid, so if there was an import data for that asset type, I'm just going to retrieve the path using the get first file name function. That's going to give you the first path that was used to import the asset, which is the path right here. So same as the path right there. It's the same thing. First path here, first path there. And then you have the path, which means that you can simply return that you found the path. So it was a success. I was able to retrieve the path and I'm returning the path right here. That's it. I found the path. So the function is done. But there's just one thing. If the automatic way and the manual way didn't work, then I'm just going to return that uh, I was not able to find the path. So it was not a success. And that's probably because the class you're trying to support is not already included in the get asset import data. We're going to look at that a little bit later. But since it's a manual way, you have to add all the different asset type you want to support manually inside the get asset import data function. So if the asset type you're trying to support is not already inside that function, that's why right here you're going to have a null and then you're not going to be able to retrieve the path because you didn't support it. It's a little bit of a manual process, so that's why right here I'm adding a little bit more information to say, hey, uh, did you forget to add that information inside that function? Anyway, we're going to look at that in a few moments, but for now, let's jump to the set asset path instead. So scroll down a little bit, we have the set asset import path. And here, same thing, we have the asset path. So the first step is going to be to load the asset we want to modify the path of. So here, I'm just going to do a static load object, same thing, loading the object asset. And if my asset is not valid, I'm going to return right away because I'm not going to be able to set the asset import path of that asset because it doesn't exist. So here I'm going to return and make sure that my asset is valid before continuing. And now that I know that my asset is valid, I can simply ask again the reimport manager to know if he's able to support that asset. So here I have my asset. I can ask if my reimport manager is able to reimport that asset. If so, we should also be able to set the import path of that asset if he's able to process it. But if he's not able to process it, we're going to do it the manual way. But first, let's start with the nicer way using the reimport manager. So here I'm just asking it if he's able to re-import the asset. If so, well, that's good. We can enter the function. Right here, I'm not providing any list of path because I'm not interested in the path because I want to modify the path. I don't want to retrieve the path, so I don't care about the path. So I'm just setting it to null. So it's not going to populate any list. Good. Now let's go inside the little block right here and to set the import path, it's super simple. You just have to update the re-import path of the asset that we have right here using the new import path. And that's it. That's as simple as that. Now the re-import manager is going to update the re-import path of the asset asset and that's done the function's over now we're setting the path to whatever we want so the set asset import path succeeded using the re-import manager once again because i want to show you how to break the re-import manager so here i'm going to identify that it was done using the re-import manager and that's awesome and return right away right here because we're done the job is done but then if the re-import manager is not able to support that asset we're going to do it the manual way and same thing we're going to retrieve the asset import data using the get asset import data that we have right here at the bottom it's going to give us the asset import data that we can then modify. If it's valid, if it's not equal to null, we can set the source file of the asset import data. So set the source file. So I'm just going to provide the new import path that I want to use to re-import my asset. And that's it. It was a success. I was able to modify the asset import path of my asset and I can return right here. But if both those techniques didn't work, I'm just going to return false. I was not able to set the asset import path. And maybe it's because the class is not already inside the get asset import data function. And about that function, it's time to go add all the classes we want to support in there. So I'm going to 
gonna scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, all the way to the get asset import data function right here. And the way we're gonna do that is simply by retrieving the asset import data from the asset we receive as input. So we receive the asset, and then we're just going to cast it to the asset type we want to support. So let's say I want to cast it to the static mesh because I want to support the static mesh. If the cast worked, it's not going to be null. It means that the asset is actually a real static mesh. And that also means that from the asset casted to the static mesh, we can retrieve the asset import data. And that's actually as simple as that. It's just a little bit annoying because we have to do the same thing for all the other class we want to support. So here I want to also support the skeletal mesh. So if it was not a static mesh, here I'm going to try to cast it to a skeletal mesh this time. Are you a skeletal mesh? I know that you're not a static mesh, so maybe you are a skeletal mesh. So I'm going to try it. Are you a skeletal mesh? Yes. Okay, good. Retrieve the asset import data from the skeletal mesh this time. But if it's not a skeletal mesh, maybe it's a texture. So are you a texture? Yes. Okay, retrieve the asset import data from the texture. Same thing for the anim sequence. Same thing for the data table. Same thing for the sound wave. And same thing for all the other different type of assets you want to support. So if you have 10 more asset types to support, you're going to have to add all those different asset types right here. Otherwise, I'm just going to return null because, well, the asset type is not supported quite yet. It's a little bit annoying because we have to retrieve the asset import data for all the different classes. That variable is actually copied in all the different classes. It's not part of a parent class and it's really just created in all the different assets. And it's a little bit annoying because, yeah, it means that we have to cast to all the different assets and ask for the asset import data ourselves uh, one class at a time. And that's a little bit annoying. And actually, not all the different asset types have the same name. In this case right here, we have all the same name and that's awesome. But in some cases, the asset import data is named a little bit differently. So just make sure that you really try to find the variable that is of type a U asset import data pointer, which is the variable of the asset import data that is inside the class of the asset you're trying to support. Oh, okay. Bon. So now that's done it's time to jump in unreal to see if it works and also to show you how to break the re-import manager because that's pretty fun so let's jump in unreal okay so in unreal i have four different assets that we're going to use to either get or set the asset import path so we have a static mesh a skeletal mesh a sound and a texture and i have all those assets open right here so in my static mesh this is the import path you have it right here same thing for the skeletal mesh this is the import path the sound this is the import path and finally the texture we have the path right here and we're going to get or set those import path using the new code we wrote today. So I'm going to show you the user interface we're going to use today. We have a simple user interface with all the different path of all my different assets. So that way it's going to be simple to either get or set the asset import path using those two little buttons right here. So I'm going to get or set the import path. When I'm setting the import path, so with all those different assets, I'm going to use the path that I wrote right here. So same path for all of them just to make it a little bit simpler. So when I'm changing the path, I'm going to use the path that I have right here. When I'm getting the path, well, I'm going to get the path that is from that asset. Obviously, in the graph, you can see that I'm simply calling the get asset import path function and the set asset import path function that we have right here. So the two functions we wrote today. For the get, we are simply feeding in the path of the assets we want to get the path from. So all those assets right here. But for the set, we're also going to feed the new import path we want to set to those assets. It's the same import path for all the different assets because I just have one text box in my user interface. Perfect. So now let's test and see if it works. I'm going to open my example uh, utility widget. I'm also going to reopen my assets right here. Gonna scroll down all the way at the bottom. And now if I click on get uh, the import path from my asset, we can see that it seemed to work uh, using the re-import manager. It's giving me the path of my FBX file that we used to import my static mesh. And if I go right here, we can see that it is the same path right here. It's in absolute, but right there it's in relative. That's just the way the re-import manager works. If you're getting or setting the asset path using the re-import manager, it's going to set it as a relative path, but it's the same path that I have right here. So it's the same thing. It's just relative versus absolute. Perfect. So I can get this import path right here, get that one, which is the path of my skeleton mesh get this one which is the path of my sound and get that one which is the path of my texture so all the get seem to work and it's all using the re-import manager so that's pretty good the re-import manager seemed to work perfectly now i'm going to set the import path for all my different assets so i'm going to start with my static mesh we can set the little star icon appeared on the left of my static mesh which means that my static mesh is not dirty and needs to be saved because we changed the import path of the static mesh and same thing once again it's going to convert it to a relative path because that's how the re-import manager worked because right now you can see that it use the re-import manager to set my path to C templama, which is the path that I have right here. Same thing for my other assets. So I can set my skeletal mesh, which modifies the path right here. Same thing for my sound and texture, which will modify the path right here and right here. 
Here we go. So it worked. Uh, we are now able to set the import path using the reimport manager. But now, what if I try to get the import path from my static mesh, for example? I can get it. Yes, it worked, but it doesn't go through the reimport manager. So my static mesh right here, I have the right path. Uh, it's in absolute because I didn't use the reimport re manager. So that's why right here it's in relative versus in absolute. Uh, this is without the reimport manager. This is with the reimport manager. So it didn't work. I was not able to get the import path of my asset using the reimport manager. So that's a little bit weird. What if I try to set the import path again it worked again but it didn't go through the reimport manager once again it sets it to an absolute path you can see it right here and that's a little bit weird because i was able to set the input path before now i'm not and that's a little bit weird i can set it to anything i want i can add as many characters as i want doesn't matter i'm able to set it without going through the reimport manager and the reason behind that is just the extension of the file the extension of the file that is currently used by the asset is going to affect the result of the reimport manager so if the file that is currently saved on the asset is broken doesn't make sense it has a weird extension so in this case for example it's a txt file which is not a file type that is supported by unreal so unreal doesn't know what to do with it so the reimport manager is not able to modify that file that's a little bit weird but that's just how it works i guess because right now if i try to set it back to an fbx file i'm going to set it it seemed to work. I was able to set it back to an FBX file. It didn't go through the reimport manager because the previous file was a TXT. So I was not able to use the reimport manager to modify that file because it was a TXT. But now that it is an FBX, I should be able to get the file path and it worked. It used the reimport manager to retrieve my FBX file. That's awesome. And I tried to set it once again. It was able to set the file path once again, same file path to an FBX file, but it was using the reimport manager this time because the previous file type that was saved inside the asset was an FBX file. If it was not an FBX file, it will not have worked. If it's a TXT, a JSON, or whatever, anything that is not a static mesh related, so I can set it to a JSON using the reimport manager because it was set as an FBX before. But if I try to set it once again, now it's not gonna work because the current file type is a JSON, which is not a file type associated to the static mesh. So yeah, it's a little bit annoying, it's a little bit clunky, and that's why I added the manual way on top of that. So now you should be able to either get or set the asset import path super easily, independently of the previous variable that was set inside the source file of your static mesh and i say static mesh but it's the same for the skeletal mesh but it's not the same for actually the texture the texture don't really care about the extension of the file path for some reason i can set it to anything i want so json it was using the reimport manager to set that source file same thing if i try to get it it's using the reimport manager also so it doesn't affect all the different asset type it affects the static mesh skeletal mesh i think it doesn't affect the sound yeah it doesn't affect the sound the sound doesn't care either so it's just super clunky it doesn't have the same behavior for all the different asset types so yeah yeah, I think it's a bit weird. So combining both the reimport manager and the manual, we should have an easier time to set and get the reimport path of all your different asset types. So yeah, I guess that's gonna be it for today's video and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye-bye.